Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Hey, yeah, good. A lively audience. That's what we like to hear in the, the morning. Welcome to day three and welcome to this session. My name is Matt Coppinger. Uh, I work for our end user computing business unit. Uh, I've been working with Horizon since its inception in 2007. Um, so very excited to be here today to talk to you about kind of the next step in the journey for Horizon uh, our Horizon technologies and how they're being integrated into Workspace ONE and our digital workspace platform. I'm joined today by... Hi everyone, my name is Peter Björk. I'm a principal systems engineer out of uh, EMEA. So I, I cover Europe, Middle East and Africa as the product specialist for VMware Identity Manager as well as our unified access gateway. Cool, thanks Peter. All right, so let's just get the formalities out of the way. I'm sure you've seen this disclaimer slide on probably almost all of the presentations. We're probably not going to be jumping into roadmap or future no, features. Uh, we're so. going to be kind of talking about how you actually go and uh, integrate Horizon with Workspace ONE. So we're talking about what's in the product today. Um, you know, I may trip up and say a few future things, and you can't hold, hold it to me. All right, so the agenda for today is, pre is pretty simple. Um, bear with me, I'm kind of going to set the scene for the first 10 minutes and talk a little bit about you know, kind of our vision for the digital workspace, how we ha see helping you getting there with our products. Um, and then we're going to jump straight in, and Pete is going to give you a kind of guided tour around how we uh, set up Horizon to work with Workspace ONE. And at the end, we're going to kind of go through a user experience demo. So we're going to see Horizon with Workspace ONE in action. Um, Peter will take you through that as well. Um, so, you know, just a quick show of hands before we start. We've got a lot of people in the audience today. How many of you have deployed Horizon, either within your own environments or a, or a customer environment? Wow, okay, that's great. Um, and how many of you out there have deployed um, VMware Identity Manager in, in one of its various guises? Okay, all right, great. So I'm assuming most of you are here today to hear about kind of how do you take that next step and bring Horizon into Workspace ONE mainly through the VMware Identity uh, uh, product or feature. All right. So let's talk about the problem that many of you faced, right? IT used to be simple. You know, it used to be kind of, hey, we're deploying Windows, Microsoft Windows, to either a laptop or a physical PC, and I'm deploying Windows applications. Super simple, right? Those were the, the great days, right? Put on my rose-tinted glasses and remember when we used to be in IT delivering that kind of simple landscape to our users. But of course, we all know now, in the modern day, welcome to the future, welcome to today, it's much more complex out there. This explosion of devices, multiple different OSs out in the enterprise, different types of applications. And whether you like it or not, your line of businesses and your users are adopting these technologies. They want the consumer experience they have on their phone or their mobile, you know, their mobile device, their tablet, and they want to kind of experience that in the enterprise. So some line of businesses are kind of going outside of IT. They're signing up to Salesforce or Concur or some of these other kind of SaaS-based applications. They're using mobile applications on their mobile devices. They're using these different types of applications. It's very complex. Um, you know, situation right now uh, with regarding to delivering apps, and managing devices out in IT in a secure way. But we see kind of, you know, our mission at VMware within Enies Computing is really to kind of help you bridge, you know, the past, the client server era with what we're calling the mobile cloud era. And I'm sure you've seen some of these slides before. But we kind of want to distinguish between what's the difference, right? In the cloud, in the client server era, it was very much based around everything was domain joined. We managed everything through, you know, Microsoft group policies. Uh, everything was joined to the domain. You know, we managed security through kind of network, right? Firewalls, VPNs. Uh, it was very kind of locked down. And we were very focused on managing devices, managing those laptops and managing those PCs. But the problem with that approach really is it's OPEX heavy. You know, a lot of our customers were faced with kind of you know, if you're having to manage a lot of PCs and laptops, you need a lot of people to do that. So it's OPEX heavy. And it was slow. You know, it's not very agile. When someone's got a fixed kind of OS and app stuck to a hardware device, you know, having to change that out if it broke, you know, it takes time to fix all that stuff, redeploy, you know, even deploy applications into that environment. And of course, you know, there's Microsoft. They're introducing updates to their operating systems or you know, introducing you know, from Windows XP to Windows 7, these huge migration projects to take those, those, those bits of hardware that you've given to your users right, and move them onto the next platform. So when we talk about the mobile cloud era, 
we see kind of a very different way of managing assets within your, your corporate environment. Firstly, we're taking kind of this approach of enrollment. It's not about every device being joined to the domain. It's about being enrolled in a kind of security and management framework, a uh, kind of mobile-based framework. From a security perspective, we're actually looking to kind of base security on identity, who you are, rather than kind of what device you're using or maybe where you're coming from, although that's important, we really want to focus on who you are and what you've got access to. And so that means we're managing policies, not devices. We're managing that I've got a user, they're in this location with this device, you know, in uh, this time zone, I can give them secur security policies, manage those policies, and give them access to the resources that they need. This approach we've seen through, you know, um, we've learned a lot from our acquisition with AirWatch, right? We've learned a lot about how do you manage huge numbers of mobile devices and a constantly kind of changing application landscape on those devices. So we're taking that knowledge from AirWatch and applying that to kind of that legacy client server IT environment. We want to manage desktops, PCs, and that virtual workspace in this mobile manner. And we believe that will allow you to scale, to be able to manage lots of people with a smaller IT team. Allows you to manage everything in a very fast, easy manner. And it's continuous delivery, continuous OS updates to those devices, continuous delivery of applications to those devices. And when we talk about applications, right, we need to kind of realize that you can't just go from client server era to mobile cloud straight away. You've got this kind of long tail of legacy applications. You know, you've got these kind of, you know, green screen apps accessing, you know, mainframes. I just had a customer come up to me talking about the need to integrate uh, with a kind of mainframe system that they had. You've got kind of old DOS-based applications, maybe, uh, old legacy Windows applications that might be client server based, legacy browser web-based applications to deal with. You know, maybe you deployed Lotus Notes, you know? And of course, you've got this newfangled mobile applications to deal with. And then finally, kind of SaaS-based applications and the new world of Office 365, right? I'm sure a lot of you kind of scratching your head, how do I adopt Office 365? How do I roll that out into my enterprise? How do I, you know, deal with that across all these different devices and all these different users? And of course, everyone's using universal Windows apps, right? Hands up. Yeah, OK, thought so. So let's take that out of the equation. But still, the application landscape, and you know this, you're facing this every day, is still quite complex. So you know, our approach, obviously, is Workspace ONE, being able to deliver you a digital workspace that can take these applications from the client server era and bring them into the mobile cloud era. And we kind of lay out our uh, products, components, features, capabilities, Kind of, we look at it like this as you cross that bridge. And on that, your left-hand side, you'll see things like user environment manager. You know, what we're trying to do is decouple aspects of the user's workspace from the hardware. So user environment manager, of course, allows you to decouple kind of their user data, their user settings away from you know, their, their, uh, the operating system or the physical device and for, allow you to manage that centrally. Uh, and easily. We've got uh, technology such as ThinApp that allows you to decouple applications from the OS, make them more portable, move them over to a different platform. You take that one step further, and of course, you've got VMware Horizon, which many of you have deployed, and that's about decoupling the OS from the hardware. It's about taking that person's desktop, virtualizing it, moving it into the data center. It's a lot more secure, and they can access it from anywhere, and it's a lot easier for you to manage when it's in the data center uh, than it is when it's out, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. And of course, we've iterated on Horizon, so hopefully many of you are using Blast Extreme. Just a show of hands, how many of you are moving from PC over IP to Blast Extreme and taking advantage of the new, the new protocol? OK, great. There's been some great sessions on Blast Extreme. It's something that we're very excited about and that we're investing heavily in. And then, of course, you've got Horizon Cloud. And this is our ability for you guys to kind of flex out if you need to deploy additional desktops, maybe as part of an acquisition or you know, uh, flex workforce type use case. You can deploy um, desktops in the cloud, you know, utilize some uh, flex kind of infrastructure out on Azure or with IBM software through Horizon Cloud and deliver desktops that way. So you've got these technologies that are allowing you to kind of uh, decouple uh, applications and desktops from the hardware, make them much more mobile, easier to move on to different devices and access from anywhere. But what we saw, obviously, is there needs to be some glue that brings this together, not just kind of that virtual Windows des desktop and virtual Windows applications, but all of the other applications you're having to deal with, such as mobile, uh, native mobile, web, SaaS-based applications. 
And this is where VMware Identity Manager comes in. And we're baking this into actually all of our products. If you buy Horizon 7 Advanced or Enterprise today, you get VMware Identity Manager. And this is the glue, really, that can connect your users to all of the applications in a super simple way. And then when you connect that with the Unified Access Gateway, how many of you are familiar with UAG? OK, a few of you. So we're going to be um, deprecating the security server, which is the, um, the appliance that essentially provides external access for users accessing VMware Horizon. And we're going to be replacing that with the Unified Access Gateway. And so there's some really cool functionality that we're doing there. We're obviously baking in a lot of the other kind of access gateway functionality for our products into that single appliance. Uh, you can deploy it today as an OVA, a virtual appliance. Uh, and actually, uh, if you purchase AirWatch today, you get a Windows version of that appliance as well. So UAG is uh, you know, key in delivering that kind of external access to internal um, corporate resources. And then, of course, we've got AirWatch. This is our approach to uh, unified endpoint management. And many people think of AirWatch as that mobile management platform, right? iOS, Android devices. But as many of you will have seen from the keynote speeches and many of the sessions this week, you know, we're taking it much further. We want you to use AirWatch to manage Windows 10. We want you to use it to manage Mac OS. We want you to use it to manage Chromebook. Yeah? And we've done some fantastic announcements with Google this week as well. So we see AirWatch as that you know, device management platform. And when you bring that into something like Identity Manager, combining those two, we've got a single kind of management framework to manage apps and devices all in one place. So I'm sure you've seen this slide before, and we're quickly getting through the marketing stuff. You know, Enterprise secure, that was the key thing. We have to make sure that as you deliver you know, data and apps to your users, it's secure. But we also want to make sure that it's consumer simple, so your users can access what they need to do the, to the, for, you know, for their jobs from any device and anywhere. So what does it look like? For those of you that haven't seen Workspace ONE, it's very simple. It pre presents a unified catalog that could be web-based. It could be kind of a native app on a mobile or tablet device. Um, and once you kind of you log into Workspace ONE, and we support different types of authentication methods, could be biometric, could be you know, MFA, uh, could be username and password. But once you log in, it presents all of the applications um, that a user may uh, need to access. That could, be, um, you know, that could be a Horizon desktop. It could be a Citrix Zen app. It could be a SaaS-based application. It could be a mobile native app. Right? So all of the applications are in one place. We've deployed this in VMware. And I think you'll find that it's been it's, it's super, superb for us, right? Easy to access applications. There's applications there. There's like a, you have obviously you know, two sides to this app. So there's the catalog that allows you to access kind of things that you've bookmarked. And then there's another piece which actually allows you to self-service provision applications. So that's just great from a user perspective. I can go through and say, OK, I didn't realize there was you know, uh, an application that allows me maybe to do um, some HR management or whatever it is. And I can access that and provision it for myself. So you know, this, this unified catalog um, provides a very easy and simple experience for your users. It's reducing dependency on things like passwords, making it very easy for them to access their, their applications. So hopefully that's given you kind of a good overview of you know, where we started on our mission to simplify you know, end user computing for you and how we're helping you move to this new era of mobile cloud. And I'm going to stop with that and hand it over to Peter, who's Excellent. going to take you through setting up Horizon with Workspace ONE. Excellent. Thank you very much. So uh, before we start to look at the actual settings within Identity Manager, um, so we refer to this as Workspace ONE, and sometimes we refer to it as, that, uh, as VMware Identity Manager. Uh, VMware Identity Manager is the portal within Workspace ONE. Uh, so that's where you see all your application icons and such. I use them interchangeable in this session, uh, while Workspace ONE typically do contain AirWatch as well. Um, uh, not necessarily, but in most cases. Uh, but when you see Workspace ONE, I say Identity Manager. Uh, from this session's point of view, it's pretty much the same thing. It's the, the portal. Um, we uh, offer three different deployment models for Horizon. First of all, the Horizon Cloud, which is obviously cloud-hosted infrastructure. Uh, then we have cloud on-prem, uh, like a hybrid mode, which is basically your admin interface is in the cloud, hosted by us as a service. But you have on-prem uh, capabilities or uh, capacity 
and that we deploy locally. And then the Horizon 7 on-prem, the typical um, uh, solution that most of you uh, is using, I'm, I'm sure of, uh, and our flagship product within the UC space, I would say. It's been around for quite a few years. Um, I will focus mainly on Horizon 7, the on-prem solution, and then uh, Matt will come back and cover some of the, the cloud offerings later on. Uh, what we do support uh, within our catalog, within the Workspace ONE as an application, Matt already described mobile applications, Windows native applications, SaaS-based applications, but when it comes to Windows remoted applications or desktops, we support Horizon, Horizon 5, it was called View back then, uh, but 5, 6, 7, all the flavors, both virtual desktop as well as published applications. We also support uh, the Horizon Cloud, uh, Cloud and Cloud On-Prem. And then we support Citrix. In the best of worlds, we would be the only one uh, uh, people use, obviously, for remoting Windows, but we know Citrix has a large installed base, obviously. So we need to play nice with Citrix when it comes to offering a true unified uh, catalog for, for, for customers. So we do integrate with the, the older Zen app functionalities as well as latest Zen desktop, both the BDI and app published versions. So technically, how do we integrate Identity Manager with uh, Horizon? And, and now we are looking at Horizon 7 on-prem. Um, First of all, let's see if I can, we have, oh, you cannot see it, great. Um, you have the Horizon, Horizon Connection Server. That is the component that Identity Manager needs to be able to communicate with. Identity Manager do not handle entitlement. Uh, Identity Manager simply synchronizes the entitlements already set up in Horizon. So when you manage who has access to which application and desktop, you do that on the Horizon side. So from MBID, uh, sorry, not allowed to use um, abbreviations, it's called, right? Uh, VMware, marketing really should have named it a smaller name if they don't want us to use abbreviations. VMware Identity Manager, we need some extra time on the clock here to manage how many times I need to say that. Uh, is stateless from, from the point of view of Horizon as well as Citrix. We simply synchronize the entitlements and then display them in, in the portal. Uh, in the, uh, uh, portal. Uh, so we are not managing the entitlements. But on the identity manager side, we have a component called the connector. The connector is handling synchronization of on-premises uh, functionalities or resources. Typically, your Active Directory, uh, Citrix, if you have a thin app repository, uh, as well as Horizon. So that is the, the main responsibility of the connector. The um, VMware Identity Manager piece of the uh, solution is the portal where we generate the access tokens that is later consumed by Horizon in order to allow access uh, uh, for the users. These can be combined into one uh, appliance. So you, we offer Identity Manager both as an OVA, like a Linux black box appliance that you de deploy into your vSphere environment, but also as a Windows installer if you install it together with AirWatch. Um, the OVA can be installed completely standalone. It has no other dependencies or requirements on any other products. Uh, but you can decide to deploy the OVA and use the built-in connector, or you can decide to, to uh, deploy a separate connector. Um, it depends on the size of your environment and, and networking um, uh, restrictions and so on. But the connector is synchronizing entitlements with the Horizon Connection Server. When a user logs into the portal and sees its uh, entitlement, clicks on an application icon or a VDI desktop icon, a SAML artifact is generated. An artifact is not a full SAML assertion. It's just a very, very small URI, like a redirect message URL, that is passed down to the Horizon client. This SAML artifact is passed over to Horizon connection server. Connection server reaches back to Identity Manager to see if this 
no, it, it, it asks for the real SAML assertion using this artifact. And then it receives the SAML assertion, knows which user it is, and then allow access uh, uh, and create the session for the user. So some customers make the mistake to think that the client traffic is tunneled via identity manager. Identity manager never proxies anything never tunnels any traffic. So the client, in this case, needs to have access both to Identity Manager as well as your horizon infrastructure. So that is uh, one of the, the uh, common questions that I get. So how do we set this up within Identity Manager? So unfortunately, I cannot really use my laser here, but you log into the admin console, and then you choose uh, manage desktops application and here you can see the wide range of different uh, solutions that we support for Horizon 7 on-prem you choose the top option Horizon view on-premises and then you get to this page which is now you actually have been redirected to that connector piece of identity manager either if you have a separate connector or using the built-in connector. Now you are looking at the connector interface. And if you look at the um, URL, it's way too small, I, I'm sure, but it says colon 8443. That is the connector address. Uh, so it's always listening on the 8443 port. Here you enable uh, Horizon. You type in one of your connection servers. If you're using a load balanced uh, or having a load balanced environment, you do not point to the load balancer. You point to one of your connection servers. We will pull the list of all connection servers automatically. Um, and then you will get, uh, it says um, update SSL certificate. If you have a trusted certificates on your uh, connection servers, you don't have to do anything, but most likely in, in many cases, perhaps not most likely, but in many cases you have self-signed because you have a load balancer for client access, you don't care what the connection servers necessarily have. But you need to press update SSL, or identity manager will refuse to, to communicate with uh, the connection server. And then you see simply SAML auth uh, enabled or not. This is a horizon setting where you have, if you have turned on SAML uh, authentication or not. And then you have a link to admin console. That simply opens up the view admin console. Uh, what else do we have there? The username that, has, uh, that is authorized to access uh, your uh, view uh, admin console, obviously. And then you, we have an option of using uh, cert certificates. So identity manager doesn't know if you will be using a certificate, uh, a, a certificate on your client in order to access your Horizon environment. There is no way for Identity Manager to know that up front. So if that is the case, you indicate it by uh, enabling that option, and that will turn off any password intelligence uh, by Identity Manager. Identity Manager will not try to be smart and ask you for your password if we don't already have it. I will come back to the password management in, in a second when we talk about some other features, but that's what that feature is doing. Another similar feature, which is uh, around um, um, uh, user access and seamless user access and single sign-on, is, uh, is Horizon True SSO. Uh, but I will cover that in more depth. But here you can enable if I'm using True SSO or not. Uh, sync local entitlements. You may have uh, a, a cloud pod architecture. So then you can decide, should I sync the local entitlements or, or only the global entitlements? And then you come down to, uh, I can barely read it in all honesty, it's so small, but uh, configuring five connection servers. So with the latest versions of Identity Manager, we changed the API calls. Historically, we required that the connector was joined to the domain in order to be able to synchronize Horizon entitlements. That is not the case if you are using Horizon 6 or later. Then we're using new APIs that do not rely on any domain membership. Uh, but if you are using View 5, you have to enable this because that will turn the connector uh, into the legacy mode, so to speak. But it does require you to join the domain as well of the connector. And then what else do we have here? Perform directory sync is a fairly smart um, option. Um, if you synchronize 
uh, horizon entitlements, and we realize the user is not already synchronized into Identity Manager, perform a directory sync of those users. So it's a smart way of pulling all the users that you need into Identity Manager. And then how, how often should you synchronize? Uh, and when a uh, user for the very first time uh, logs in and clicks on an icon, should we launch the client, which is in, in this case uh, the option chosen, or should we launch the web-based client, uh, so uh, embedded in a web browser or not? Uh, the, the user can override this anytime. But now the main, the main important thing with this uh, page, when you click save, if you have synchronized previously, when you hit save, something referred to as the metadata, that is something that is being used in a SAML communication, SAML trust, the metadata on the connector is wiped out. So we cannot connect to, uh, to the Horizon server. You must perform a sync now, immediately after, not, not necessarily the second after, but your, your users will not be able to launch Horizon's desktops until a new sync has been made. So that is a pretty ugly brick wall to run into. So if you change anything, hit save, make sure that you do a sync as well, so you, you update that um, metadata. Secondly, and this is, this is very common, um, in, within Identity Manager, we have a, a um, knowledge about the location of the client, which is based on IP ranges. Depending on your IP range, you need to dictate or specify what is the client access URL. So what is the client URL that end users is trying to connect to, to your Horizon environment? And most likely they are different uh, from internal traffic versus external traffic. Uh, and this is, where, this is where you specify the load balancer address. If you're lo using a load balancer, do it in the network ranges. And this is a setting within Identity Manager Admin Console as well. So here I have created two network ranges, LAN and everything else. And then um, you can see that it says client access URL view pinata.local. Obviously a local internal uh, uh, URL. So it cannot be accessed from anywhere else but on my LAN. And then for my external network, I'm using my externally available uh, FQDN. So just make sure that you uh, be aware of this. Um, it, so that is super critical. So true SSO. Uh, oh. Peter, before you yes. jump in there, anyone in the audience using true SSO today? Show of hands. OK, a few of you. All right. OK. Just wanted to get kind of an understanding of the experience with, with this particular technology within Horizon. So why, why did true SSO come around? So it, in order to perform an interactive logon into a Windows machine, you either can provide username and password or a certificate. There is no other way to perform a interactive logon, which is hindering the new mobile era. Most of the solutions, when you log into like a portal or something, will ask the user, even though you have configured uh, multi-factor authentication, still will prompt the user for uh, active directory credentials. Why? If, if the portal have access to uh, uh, Windows uh, um, desktops in, uh, later on. The reason is they want to cache that active directory password and then perform a seamless single sign-on with that cached credentials. Um, which is obviously not, not the best idea in the world. Uh, we, it's much, much better if we can solve this differently, uh, especially for user uh, experience reasons. I want to click on the icon. I don't want to click on the icon, get prompted for uh, my username and password, for example. So that's where true SSO comes into play. True SSO, uh, th there is no way we can acquire the Active Directory for the user's password. It's, it's impossible. We cannot do it. So the only thing we can do to, to make the user experience better is to figure out a way to, to do it with certificates. So that's what we are doing with the Horizon feature True SSO. But it, it goes hand in hand with Workspace ONE, with VMware Identity Manager. 
because without Identity Manager, without the portal, there is not much use of TrueSSO in all honesty. And it's there to provide a seamless access. Uh, let's say you are on a mobile device. Um, so I think that summarized these two slides. This is how it technically works. Uh, first, uh, the user uh, has access to Identity Manager. Within the portal, the user clicks on an icon, uh, a horizon entitlement icon. A uh, SAML artifact that I mentioned previously is passed down to the client. That is step number one. Step number two, the, uh, the uh, uh, client passes the SAML artifact over to the connection server. Connection server reaches back to identity manager to retrieve the full SAML assertion. Now we know the user. The user has been authenticated uh, because we are trusting our identity manager. Uh, so that is step three. Horizon is now looking at the user and see, I don't have a certificate already. This cer certificate that it will request in a second is very short-lived, but still it can have it uh, in the cache. If it's not in the cache, it will reach out to a new component that was introduced with uh, this true SSO feature called the enrollment server. So this is a separate server, most likely, that you deploy uh, in your environment. So just keep that in mind. Uh, this enrollment server will reach out to your CA, your uh, certificate authority, your internal cert certificate authority, request a short-lived client certificate that is passed back, uh, back to the connection server, which is then uh, placed into your uh, virtual desktop and then used to perform the user authentication. So that's the whole flow. Looks very, very complicated, uh, <laughs> but in all honesty, it, it's beautiful from an end user uh, point of view. At the end of this session, I will run through a, a recorded demo where you can see all this happening. I think obviously the main benefit, right, is we're trying to eliminate that dependency on passwords. Right? Yes. How many support tickets are generated around, you know, forgotten passwords or password issues? Well, you know, we want to yeah. kind of remove that complexity and, yeah. and obviously provide that, that consistent experience as well, that seamless experience, right? Yeah. From you, logging into Identity Manager all the way through to your Windows 10 or... Exactly. So app. remember this marketing slide, consumer simple, enterprise secure. So. Uh, you can argue true SSO is actually a little more secure because we are not uh, caching any passwords. We are not passing any passwords on the back end of your data centers. It's all certificate-based authentication. Uh, but the consumer, uh, consumer simple, uh, think about Facebook, for example. I'm sure some of you are using Facebook here. Uh, if you would have been prompted for your username and password every time you launch Facebook, I'm sure there will be no status updates today. People would just not care. It would be too, too much of a hassle to do it. No, we as, as users, we require access without the need of, of performing any actions, more or less. The thumbprint, I can live with. And with that, I should have access. The same applies to, to enterprise uh, uh, software. Uh, if you want your end users to actually use them, if you now spend enormous money to mobilize your applications, and, and you look at the, uh, the uh, adaption rate is, is very low, uh, the usage rate, I'm sure it might, it, very often it's related to it's too hard to gain access to it. Even worse if you need to connect a VPN or something. Um, so going back to the true SSO, what we support, it's, it, this is, something that is available also in the Horizon Cloud uh, uh, offering, but mainly Horizon 7 is where most people uh, see it and, and, and use it. We do rely on this new component called the enrollment server, so just keep that in mind. We do rely on connecting to your CA, and, and we need to have a special certificate template, obviously, that is being used. So that is, it, it, it needs to be considered when you deploy it. Um, Yes, both on-prem or SaaS version of Identity Manager uh, works, obviously. Um, so with that, next. Uh, with the latest version of Identity Manager, we introduced something called the SPInit flow. Um, SPInit, um, you need to know a little bit about SAML, uh, when, uh, what is referred to um, in SAML, you mainly have two different methods of initiate and, and uh, access flow. 
um, IDP in it means I start on my identity uh, provider, click on an icon, typically, and then I launch my resource. SP init is service provider initiated, which means, let's say I have federated Salesforce. My user starts at Salesforce. They type in login.salesforce.com and then identify uh, themselves, get redirected to the configured identity provider. So that is an SP init flow. We used to only support the IDP init flow with Horizon uh, and the integration with Identity Manager, which resulted in if a end user launched the client and clicked on, on Horizon, they would get an ugly error message saying, no, you need to authenticate using a different method. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, thank you. So this is the IDP init flow. But with the SP init flow, we can tell Horizon, that if the client requests uh, a, a resource but is not yet authenticated, redirect to the identity provider, which is obviously the identity manager. And this is supported for obviously when you launch the Horizon client by itself. If you click on a shortcut of a published app, for example, or if you're using the file type extension registration, so you click on a, a file type extension that is registered to something in Horizon, then you get redirected to identity provider. This has a second benefit. Uh, oh, hang on, we'll cover the settings in Horizon first. So this is where you set it up. I was now, say, Peter, before, before you do that, I think you know the great benefit here is for those of you that deployed Horizon, you know you can use this feature to then kind of start onboarding people into that workspace one type experience, right? They're trying to access their desktop through Horizon. With this feature enabled, it then moves them over into um, you know, the identity manager portal, right? And they can start using resources there. I think you're going to kind of show that a little bit. Yes. So now we can, the first bullet there required, now we can enforce authentication via identity manager. Uh, so there is no way to gain access to Horizon, uh, yes, Horizon, without first authenticate using identity manager. Just a, a quick side note for people using a unified access gateway. If you configure unified access gateway to also require authentication like RSA, then you have broken the logic because when you have authenticated using Identity Manager, the SAML uh, should pass you over all the way to the connection server and then get access. So when you use Identity Manager and you want to enforce authentication methods using Identity Manager, make sure Unified Access Gateway is in, in pass-through mode. It allows any connection. It doesn't require any authentication. Because if it does, the user will lose the seamless access. The user will be prompted for RSA, for example. Because the Unified Access Gateway doesn't understand that the user has already correctly authenticated. And just to keep that in mind. So you, you specify required, and then enable workspace one mode. We call this the SP init mode. And then you point out my identity manager. So what is the URL to redirect the user? And then we can enforce that if someone is trying to connect with an older version of uh, the Horizon client that doesn't support this mode, we simply deny the access. So uh, users are forced to use this. And that brings me to uh, the enforcement of access policies. So within Identity Manager, we have a wide range of capabilities of, of applying uh, uh, access policies. So we can base them on network range, uh, the type of device, uh, what type of application you're using, which Active Directory group membership uh, you are in, and so on. Um, so we can enforce for individual applications even higher methods of authentication. So we may allow users to access the portal with the simplest possible, let's say username and password. But for these particular applications, we do enforce, let's say, multi-factor authentication. And if you purchase Workspace ONE advanced and above, you get free, uh, nothing is free, but uh, <laughs> it in, it's included. Uh, VMware Verify, uh, our own multi-factor authentication. Uh, 
So that, that is an excellent uh, uh, method of now bringing much, much more intelligence into your Horizon uh, end users access. Horizon natively by itself is a little binary, one or, or zero. You have access, no, you have access. Applying identity manager in front of it, we have a much, much more modular and flexible access policies that we can apply. I think we're starting to see that's the kind of start of seeing the benefit of integrating Horizon into Identity yeah. Manager. It gives you that flexibility around the access policies. And as we develop and integrate, you know, uh, the AirWatch product with Identity Manager, we've got some. We'll be able to have some really granular access policies yeah. for for apps like you know accessing resources like Horizon. Absolutely. Uh, some gotchas that uh, I the the well, my nose is a little flat running into these brick walls all the time. This is so common that it's ridiculous. The metadata, why this is default settings, I have no idea. The metadata expiring time, I, I mentioned earlier that if you click save on the connection server, you have to sync to update the metadata. This metadata by default has 24 hour time to live. So if you're unlucky, your sync interval, interval of, on your connector will not be in phase. So you may end up with 30 minutes or so where your clients cannot connect because the metadata is expired. Incredible irritating. It is mentioned in the manual, but we also have a KB article. So what I tend to do, I, I may even make it even longer, but change the TTL to at least four or five days and make sure that your sync interval is at least one uh, per day. Uh, on uh, the identity manager, and is then it, then you're configured no problem. in identity manager. Right? This is a combination well. of uh, Horizon and identity manager. Uh, you need to um, edit the ADF. What is it called the um, database in Horizon? ADS edit. That, that chestnut. I think everyone's familiar with that. Uh, well, whatever it is. That's where you. It, <laughs> it's very detailed, explained in the manual. So you go in there, uh, change the uh, the settings, and then you're good to go. Uh, this is this is like a corner case, but in very large environments where you separate the connector, uh, not only one, but you have like many connectors, only a subset synchronizing the Active Directory, and an another uh, set of connectors is synchronizing Horizon and Talent. These other connectors will not start to synchronize the, the uh, Horizon and Talent if they are not a part of what is referred to within Identity Manager as a worker. And the worker is created when awareness about Active Directory is created, to keep it simple. We, we shouldn't go too deep into this. So just be aware. You cannot just distribute connectors all over the place and, and think they will start to synchronize. You, you need to make sure that they know about the Active Directory in, in order to be able to do that. So, and back to you, Matt. Thanks, Peter. All right, so we're going to talk uh, briefly about Horizon Cloud Pod architecture. Confusingly, this has zero to do with Horizon Cloud and everything to do with Horizon 7 on-prem. So Horizon Cloud Pod architecture, again, and I'm probably bothering you in a bit of morning exercise, getting you to raise your hands, but who of you out there have deployed or are using Horizon Cloud Pod architecture? Okay, cool, a couple of you. So the concept of Cloud Pod architecture is that I want to make two separate instances of Horizon uh, aware of each other. Why would I want to do this? Well, I'll give you an example. Maybe I have a user that is accessing a Horizon instance in London. Um, and if the London uh, instance of Horizon goes down, I want to be able to automatically revert them to uh, an instance, say, in Paris, where they can continue to access uh, some Horizon desktop or resources. So that's kind of the, you know, BC, uh, BCDR is, you know, business continuity, disaster recovery uh, is one of the kind of key things behind Cloud Pod architecture, and also scalability. You may go beyond 10,000 users and need to be able to deploy an additional Horizon instance. And so we use Cloud Pod architecture to be able to kind of unify um, those two instances. So kind of got a layout here. You can see I've got two users, one in London, one in uh, Paris. Um, and they're a member of an AD group for their particular site. And they're both members of an AD group called Global Finance. What I've done in Horizon is for my London user, I want to set that London user up in Horizon with a home site that is the London uh, pod, right? The London instance of Horizon. 
And, and similarly for the Paris user, I've set up in Horizon the home site to point to uh, the Paris uh, site. Um, and I could optionally have some local entitlements. We talked about local entitlements. So within Horizon, in the London pod, I might uh, have an entitlement for my London user to access maybe London version of Notepad, right, or a specific London app. Um, but really what I want to do is, is give that London user access to a desktop or a resource uh, in both London and Paris. So if London falls down, they get reverted to the Paris site. And to do this, I implement what's called global entitlements. So what essentially I'm doing here is I can add the global finance group to a global entitlement. And that global entitlement is made up of uh, a pool of resources, either desktop or apps in, in London, and also a... Um, set of resources or a, a pool, a desktop pool in the Paris site. And this way I can create this, this, uh, you know, this idea of a global entitlement to get that functionality. So from there, once I've set all that up in Horizon, what I need to do is synchronize that um, to Identity Manager and Workspace ONE to make sure that Workspace ONE is aware of this concept of global entitlements and my Horizon pod, um, sorry, my Horizon Cloud pod architecture. So you can see here what I need to do is I need to synchronize uh, each of the kind of the, uh, the horizon pods to identity manager. So just quickly walk through what that looks like and how we do that. So um, Peter was showing this screen earlier. You know, how do you enable horizon in identity manager? So here you can just see an example of I've um, set up a view pod which has a number of connection servers in there. So that's pretty standard, right? We've, we've just done that. We've added that, that view, the initial view pod. And I've con configured some things here such as you know, synchronize local entitlements, uh, and you know, I can go ahead and, and basically save that. Right? And I'm not going to sync now. I'm just going to save that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and add the additional view pod, right? the second view pod, that Paris site. Do exactly the same process, just add all the information in there about the Paris site. So I've created two pods within Identity Manager, and I'm going to save that. Then I need to create the concept of this cloud pod architecture, what we call a federation. So this is the joining of the two Horizon pods. So I just go to this federation tab in Identity Manager, checkbox, I want to enable cloud pod architecture, and then I'm going to create a federation name, and I'm going to configure a launch URL. So this launch URL is essentially the load balance URL, global load balance URL for both Horizon pods. Right? So, um, and, and that way I can then access, you know, I'm accessing both, you know, potentially accessing both of those resources through that load balancing. And then I'm going to add some pods. So here, actually, I've only added one pod. But obviously, for Cloud Pod Architecture, I need to add an additional pod. So I click on Add Pod, and I'll be able to select that second pod. And you can see here that I'm referencing the second pod as, you know, I don't know if you guys at the back, you probably can't see. But actually, it's pointing at a connection server. Okay, So as Peter said, this isn't kind of, we're not specifying, um, when we set up the pods, we're not specifying low balance. Um, URLs here or, or uh, fully qualified domain names, we're specifying a single connection server that represents the pod in this instance. And so we, what we would do to enable cloud, access to cloud pod architecture from a load balance perspective is when we've got this launch URL. And what that does is when I go back into my network ranges set up, I'll see the cloud pod architecture there and I can start to configure the necessary network ranges and access to uh, cloud pod architecture. So when a user logs into Identity Manager, now, you know, if I've not synced my, my local entitlements, I should just get the global entitlement, right? So you know, my global finance desktop, when I click on that, if my home site is available, it will launch that desktop in London. If the London site is not available, it will launch that desktop in Paris. Okay? Did I miss anything there, Peter? Pretty no, I think you're good. Forward. So that's Horizon Cloud Pod Architecture. Now let's quickly talk about integrating Horizon Cloud. This is our, obviously our SaaS-based uh, DAS solution where we can deploy desktops and apps onto IBM SoftLayer or Azure, Microsoft Azure. So of course we fully support Horizon Cloud, um, you know, hosted, so SaaS-based Horizon Cloud uh, with Identity Manager. This does require, of course, an on-premise, on-premises IDM connector, and that connector needs to be joined to Active Directory. Okay. And then we're going to go through a very uh, similar uh, process where we synchronize you know, Horizon Cloud with Identity Manager. Um, so we're going to start off just by enabling Horizon Cloud and Identity Manager. We're going to create a Horizon Cloud Federation ar artifact in IDM. 
and we're going to use that to configure SAML authentication in Horizon Cloud, okay? And that will give me the authentication, and then, of course, um, I initiate the, the sync with Horizon Cloud so that we've synced all the entitlements. And, of course, when we do that, we sync all the desktops and hosted apps as necessary. So this is what it looks like. Um, so in the connector, I've got this Horizon Air Resources tab. I can enable that, fill out the necessary information about my tenant, um, about the administration credentials to access that tenant, and also similarly, um, you know, kind of frequency that I want to sync here. And what's not shown on this UI actually is I save it and then I can sync, okay, and sync that up, and then I immediately sync uh, all of the entitlements from Horizon Cloud into Identity Manager. Then what I need to do is set up the authentication piece. So I can obviously you know, single sign on to Horizon Cloud from Identity Manager. So this is, um, in, in this part of the administration console, I establish the kind of the, the tenant access URL, and a unique, a unique identifier to that tenant, which can be that same URL. And then I want to add the tenant appliance URLs as well. And I want to accept the cell certificate that's used to access Horizon Cloud. So once I'm set up there, that creates some SAML metadata within IDM, which I can take and use that to enable SAML authentication in Horizon Cloud. And I apologize, I don't have that screenshot in here, but it's pretty straightforward to go into your Horizon Cloud tenant, set up uh, SAML authentication, and use the SAML metadata that you've got from uh, Identity Manager. Yeah, this, this is actually a screenshot from the very latest version. Um, because in, in the latest version, we added the capability of changing user ID attribute. So the, the name ID that will be used. I think, if I remember correctly, we only supported UPN. Uh, um, previously. Now you have a wide range of different user attributes that you can choose from as the unique user identifier used to pass the user over to, to Horizon Cloud. Okay. One thing that I forgot to mention on Cloud Pod Architecture, actually, I just want to go back and um, clarify something. So I talked about setting up the pods. You set up the two pods and you save the information. Um, you configure the cloud pod architecture, and then we can go back and do the synchronization once we've set up uh, both of the Horizon pods and the CPA federation. We then go back and do the sync, and that will bring through all of the global entitlements. Okay. So I just wanted to kind of go back and cover that. That's a point that I missed. All right, okay, so with all the technical details down, I think Peter's going to walk us through kind of the user experience and what's happening. Uh, as we go through so logging, into works, logging into Horizon through Workspace ONE. Yes, so this is the user experience. And while it is recorded, I haven't uh, faked it in any way. This is my home lab. I did it uh, um, uh, earlier this week, actually, from here. So what I did do, uh, because I had some poor latency from where I connected, I'd shortened uh, some of the access times. But if you are closer, uh, to your uh, environment or you are on a better network than I was, uh, this is pretty much the experience you, you would expect. Uh, but I haven't cut out any of the details, the separate what is happening. So this is on an enrolled iPad. Unfor unfortunately, uh, the generation one of uh, uh, iPad mini, so I do not have thumbprint. So I have a pin instead. Uh, but other than that, it, it's, it, uh, hopefully, you will like the user experience just as much as I do. So, ah, oh, damn it, always. Uh, where is my mouse? It's there somewhere. Oh, no. Uh, so, first of all, I launched the uh, native Workspace ONE app. And here, typically, this, this is going great. Hey, I'll up radio. You do okay, this okay. Excellent. So I say pause. You say pause, and finally, I'll, yours. I found a role. Some use. There you go. <laughs> so here, when when I entered the pin, typically you would use your thumbprint. This is not authentication. So you can pause there if you haven't. This is not authentication. This is unlocking the native client. The native client has its own protection because I may lend out my iPhone to my kids and they are not supposed to open my business apps, but they can use all my other apps on my corporate-owned, personal-enabled copy device, like uh, this typically um, uh, looks like in this scenario. So I haven't authenticated into Identity Manager, and now this is the, the user experience. I click on the uh, Internet Explorer, a published application within Horizon, 
I'm redirected to a web page. This is where the authentication happens. This signing in is using Identity Manager Workspace ONE's unique mobile SSO, which will use a certificate uh, placed on the device to perform a seamless authentication. It, if you, yeah, you can pause there. Once uh, that seamless authentication is done, <coughs> we are performing a device compliance check as well. So what I did there um, in, the, in the previous step with the Safari launch was actually to perform a certificate-based authentication that supports any native iOS application supporting federation on the back end. So if you can federate, like Salesforce, Workday, uh, anything that can be federated to Identity Manager, we can perform this mobile SSO functionality. Uh, so I'm sure we have had plenty of sessions discussing mobile SSO throughout the world here. So if not, um, uh, look up previous years. We have uh, discussed in details how that works. But it's truly unique and, uh, and, and will offer your end users a seamless experience. And then we go back through API calls and talk to AirWatch and say, hey, is this device still compliant? Yes. Now you have access. So the user hasn't done anything, but we have still checked two things. So here we claim uh, consumer simple, enterprise secure. And this is IE6 running on now This is IE11, so actually. IE11 uh, yeah, so it's a that. later Internet Explorer. But what I did, I launched it without being prompted. So I have performed an interactive login. Uh, and this is using true SSO. So mobile SSO was when I gained the launch of the client. Now I had my SAML artifact. And then the true SSO kicked in and allowed me to get access to Internet Explorer without any prompts whatsoever. On a Horizon RDS agent. Yes, this is Horizon RDS. So, and then if you roll the video again, I'm, I'm impressed about your competence when it comes to man, going navigating multimedia. We need to do this more often. Yes. So now I'm, I'm simply typing in just to show you that I have on my iPad an iOS device that obviously is not domain joined. I have now transformed the user into a Kerberos user. Here you may, can barely see it, but our friends at F5 have lent me an internal application that simply performs a Kerberos authentication. So here it says pinata backslash test user one. So the mobile device is obviously not having the, the user name. It's not domain joined. But now I can consume and access web applications as an uh, Active Directory user. Yes, please continue. Um, next, so this is mobile SSO together with true SSO. But let's say as an admin, you think, well, this seamless is all right, and we may allow it for certain applications, but the full-blown desktop? No, I don't think so. I will require a multi-factor authentication. And this is our VMware Verify. You saw the notification at the top. I click there, and then I click Approve. Oh, sorry, I need to open up VMware Verify. This can be done with a thumbprint as well. And then I click Approve, and then I'm done. So if I had a thumbprint enabled iPad, I would have been able to perform multi-factor authentication with only clicking uh, with my finger. And then obviously my, my virtual desktop is, is launched uh, and then I play around with that. Uh, but seamless again, uh, no, at no point in time was I asked for the, for the password, uh, uh, thanks to true SSO. So that is de definitely key to the, uh, to the solution. Um, we have one minute left, so I think we can skip. I'm, I'm not doing anything of importance, I'm just playing around with it. So let's leave with one minute for questions, but we are allowed to stay a little later here on stage. So if you have questions, please. Uh, come up and we will spend like 15, 20 minutes to answer those individual questions.